This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. I realize that it is pretty embarrassing to be a 31-year-old person and to lose your voice from screaming at a college football game, but that is the scenario I am in right now, so I apologize if my voice is a little bit hoarse for today. Uh, I was out in Dublin for the Northwestern versus Nebraska game. Result was good, so a bit more yelling than anticipated, but I had a blast out there at Dublin, a really cool city. Got to see some awesome people out there. Got to watch Northwestern win a game, which I didn't expect, so... A lot of good stuff out there, but I apologize if I sound a little bit weird for today. Still in recovery mode from Dublin, but a fun show on tap for today because we got some good MLB stuff, I think. Got some money lines, some strikeout props to go through for this Monday action on a six game, well, six games after seven o'clock that I ran through for today. We'll break down those, what I'm liking for today, and then also take a look back at a Pretty successful last week for the show. We'll do all that right now. Let's dive on in. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Here to take a look at Monday's MLB action, breaking down a money line by numbers like and two strikeout props as well. And then we'll take a look uh, again at what happened last week. Again, for accountability purposes, we will still be going through covering the past and outlining how things went, how I might have done things differently, stuff like that. So we'll all that coming up later on today. But we do have uh, week one college football coming up on Wednesday with Dr. Ed Fang. We've got Pitching Ninja back once again tomorrow. Loaded week once again this week here on Covering the Spread. So make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Also up on the FanDuel YouTube page. Hit subscribe there because they do go up after the fact on there as well. So just search for Covering the Spread or the FanDuel YouTube page. Hit subscribe and swing on back throughout the week for some more good content. NFL kickoff is still a few weeks away, but you can get in on the action now on FanDuel Sportsbook with their NFL Super Win bonus. Right now, anyone who places at least a $50 Super Bowl winner bet will get $5 back for each win their team has during the regular season. There are also a ton of other features, futures markets available like team win totals, division winners, player props, and so much more. There is no better place to get ready for the football season than on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook and official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states only. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable free bets that expire seven days after a street. Max free bet $50. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-979. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. Or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's dig into the money lines that my numbers like for today. And just one showing good enough value for me to bet it. And that is actually on the Angels scoring off of the Yankees. Right now, that money line is plus 154 at FanDuel Sportsbook. I do think there is value there. The implied odds at plus 154 are 39.4%. My numbers are the Angels at 47.9% to win. So a pretty big gap, potentially too large, but it's big enough where I've got a lot of room to be wrong here. A lot of this stems from my numbers being skeptical of Frankie Montas. He did look better last time out, went five and two thirds, two runs, uh, just let up. uh, He had six strikeouts in that game. So a better start from Montas than we've seen his entire tenure at the Yankees. The problem is that he was still using a sinker a lot. And I think that's kind of the like part of it's the injury, but I think it's also the sinker is part of the cause for why he's been struggling more recently. It's just, it's not a good pitch for him. He has a 396 Woba against it, according to baseball savant. So it was encouraging to see him pitch well, but the previous red flags from Montas didn't evaporate from one good start. In eight starts for Montas with more sinkers, he has a 4.33 skill interactive ERA. So I'm still skeptical of him right now. He's missing Jose Suarez, and it's a lefty against the Yankees. That is a terrifying combination to have, but my numbers know that. They know how good the Yankees are versus lefties. And despite that, despite not being in love with Suarez, despite loving this Yankees offense, 
it still gives the Angels a really good shot to win this this game. I do agree with my numbers here. I, I did bet this one. I got plus 158, so plus 154, pretty much right there. The win odds are under 50%, so make sure you're scaling correctly um, in terms of the expected value of this bet. Keep that in mind. But when we got an 8 percentage point gap between what my numbers say and what the market says, I'm okay not passing that up and locking that one in. So the Angels plus 154 on the money line versus the Yankees. The favorite bet that I have in the money line market for today, and probably my favorite bet in terms of other stuff too. I do like a couple strikeout props, but I'd put that one above it. So right now, Angels plus 154, the one bet I like most for baseball for today. With that said, there are two strikeout props, and one of them is tied to the Yankees point, and that's Frankie Montas under six and a half strikeouts at minus 148. This one is a five and a half elsewhere, so it could also be there. We'll talk about that in a second, but I just don't like that singer from Montas. Uh, it doesn't get whiffs. Using it too much right now. The Angels are a, a high strikeout team. They have a 26% strikeout rate on their current active roster versus righties, but this is a really big number. If it stays at six and a half, I'd be willing to lay about minus 170 on this one to get action on the under for Montas, but I'm guessing more likely this number gets down to five and a half to get in line with other books, and that's what you got in other spots. My projections do have Montas down for 5.45 strikeouts, so right in line with the uh, five and a half, but that still leads to under odds greater than 50%, but well, with the way things are distributed, the way things work from a pitching perspective, at DraftKings, uh, under five and a half is plus 115. I'm okay with that. So whether you're getting minus 148 under six and a half, I prefer that one, obviously, but I would also take under five and a half at plus 115 for Montas. Just make sure you're not getting a bad number there, but check out the under on Montas and to see how you want to play that one. Now, this is a unique scenario. I'm not a big same game parlay, same game parlay person because it requires me to find two bets I like within the same game, and that doesn't usually happen. We do have that here. Uh, if you were to try to parlay the money line with Montas's strikeout prop under, you get plus 262 over at FanDuel Sportsbook uh, on those two parlay together in a same game parlay. I think that works. Um, I Again, I'm not a huge same game parlay person because very rarely do I find two bets I like within the same game, but these two are correlated a bit. If Montas struggles, probably not going to get to over six and a half strikeouts. The Angels then more likely to win this game. There is some interaction there. I think this is fair. So I would check that out. Give it some consideration. Not going to pound the table for it because I'm not a huge parlay person in general. I have a pretty strict set of rules I need to hit in order to get there. I do get there with this one, though. I'm not opposed as like a broad. Uh, from a broad perspective, I just have a pretty strict set of criteria. This one meets that criteria. So if you want to pair the Montas strikeout prop under six and a half with the money line at plus 154, plus 262 at FanDuel Sportsbook, I can take that. So this is, a, is actually a spot where I'm good with doing that for today, being a bit more aggressive and getting both those under the same umbrella. The other strikeout prop I like for today is on Ranger Suarez. That's at four and a half at FanDuel Sportsbook with minus 112 on the over. There was a minus 111 lingering out there earlier on. So again, shop around, see what you can get on this one here. But I do believe we'll see the Suarez number creeping up as the day goes along. I have Suarez projected for 5.81 strikeouts tonight, and he's become more of a high strikeout pitcher recently. We've seen Suarez using a cutter now, which is not a pitch he had in his arsenal earlier on this year, but in the eight starts using that pitch, Suarez has a 23.9% strikeout rate. Pretty good number. The Diamondbacks, not a big strikeout team against lefties, but they're also not a good team against lefties. That helps Suarez work later in the game and hopefully get more chances to bolster that strikeout number, get a higher number of plate appearances uh, out there, which means the requisite strikeout rate to get above that will inherently be lower. The roof is also closed tonight in Arizona. That's another thing that can help pitching, can help effectiveness in terms of getting Suarez deeper in the game. So if we look at the number here, it's again minus 112 on the over right now. I have his over odds at 60%, so that'd be out to uh, minus 150. I'd be willing to go to minus 130 to give myself more wiggle room for my, for, for my numbers to be wrong. I'm not sure if it'll get there, honestly, because it would be a pretty significant move. It's already 9.05 a.m. Eastern we're talking about this, so... It's been held, holding steady for about the past half hour. I think you'll be able to get four and a half at a pretty reasonable number. So check your books, see which numbers you can get available to you. So you can get that minus 111 out there somewhere. But if it's minus 130 or better, I'd be okay with that one. 
Uh, so Ranger Suarez over four and a half strikeouts, minus 112. Frankie Montas under six and a half strikeouts, minus 148, or potentially under five and a half if you can get plus money on that as well. I think that works. So overall, pretty solid baseball date for today. Check out the same game parlay if it's available. If it's one of those sites where they don't let you use unders in the same game parlay, wouldn't bother. But uh, if, you, if it's FanDuel Sportsbook specifically and you can do that, I'd be checking that out for the Montas strikeout prop for today. That's going to wrap up the Monday stuff, but I do want to go back through last week's shows and outline some of the bets we discussed here again for accountability purposes and recap recap how things went. Actually, pretty good week across the board. We had Brandon Gadula on to preview the Tour Championship, and Brandon talked a lot about Rory McIlroy winning the entire tournament. Rory was 9-1 to one to win the tournament after accounting for starting strokes. I think he was plus 650 to win it without accounting for that. And McElroy came back from a six-stroke deficit to win that thing on Sunday. Really good rally for him. So uh, McElroy winds up uh, cashing that one on the to win it all at nine to one. Good bet by Brandon there. He did like Xander Schauffele as well. Xander finished fourth in the overall. I think he was uh, eight to one or plus 750 uh, to win that one. But he did get McElroy. Other stuff for Brandon, uh, he had a, a Stallings over Straka head-to-head, uh, Cam Young top 10, and the Cam Young 72 winner bets. Those ones didn't hit, but the McElroy 9-1 to winner does hit, so a good call by Brandon and Roy McElroy. Winning the Tour Championship, uh, the FedEx Cup playoffs, and a nice uh, outing by Rory there to get that uh, third FedEx Cup championship as well. We had Ed on the show last week to talk some college football. Again, you can find Ed on Twitter at The Power Rank. You can find Brandon at Kadula13. Uh, but at The Power Rank to find Ed, he went 1-1 one one in the first week of college football, week zero. He was in the Northwestern, plus 13.5 in, in Ireland. Did get some good movement on that. Uh, I was back at 12.5 in most spots. And honestly, like part of this was like Scott Frost maybe making a mistake with the onside kick. I didn't hate it, honestly, given that... Um, if it had worked, they would have had a two score lead in the ball and that game might've been toast, but you know, it was partly that, but also Northwestern's line kicks some butt during that game. They play great. Uh, Ryan Helinski very much exceeded my expectations. So sure. You could put this on the coaching staff if you want to, but a that's part of the analysis B Northwestern covered the spread by 15 points or whatever, depending on the number that you got uh, by winning this game by three. So Honestly, Ed's numbers had this, I think, as a nine-point game in Nebraska's favor. Northwestern covered that pretty easily. So good call by Ed on that one. Uh, being in Northwestern versus Nebraska, plus 13 and a half at the time we spoke back on Wednesday. Hopefully you got at that number. Maybe you got a money line. I'm not sure uh, I'm not sure what the numbers were set on Ed for that, for the money line part of it. But a win against the spread, regardless, for Northwestern in that Ireland game. Other one that Ed's numbers liked was Hawaii plus eight and a half against Vanderbilt. This one didn't go as well. Um, Vandy rolled here. They won that one 63 to 10. Uh, so Vandy, good showing in week zero. Hawaii, not as much, but one in one week for Ed there uh, on those two bets that his numbers liked for last week. Also, do you want to remind you that uh, Ed did talk about a week one game there. I'm not going to make you go back and listen to it because I'd force you to listen to an entire podcast analyzing games that already happened. But he did talk about Clemson minus 21 and a half against Georgia Tech in week number one at last check. That number was still available. So Ed did talk about a week one game that he likes. Clemson minus 21 and a half versus Georgia Tech. Uh, scrolling now to see if you can still get that one. Uh, but either way, uh, yeah, minus 21 and a half for Clemson right now. So you can still get that one. Check that out. We'll have a full preview week one with Ed coming up on Wednesday to break down his favorite bets uh, for college football in week number one. Final thing we talked about last week was NASCAR at Daytona, a wild race. I was on a plane for most of it, so I didn't get to actually, actually watch it, uh, but landed and turned on the race. Saw, so I had like, Two like long shot bets. I had um Landon Castle plus 350 to be the top Chevy and Cody Ware plus 450 to be the top Ford. I got off the plane and they were both second among their respective manufacturers. So I was like, oh boy, what are we doing here? So uh didn't didn't get either of those, but came real close. Uh Ware was actually out front in the final corner and got passed by Austin Cindric, but like that's kind of the risk you take when you bet on bad drivers, they could get passed in the final turn, despite having you know good positioning. He lost that bet that that's part of the analysis. Sure. Castle finished third among Chevys, but fourth overall. So 
I felt good about those two bets. Those were not in the show, though. The show bets were uh, Blaney 12 to 1 to win. He wrecked. Uh, he wrecked with Christopher Bell, who I also liked at 25 to 1. Eric Jones caught up in a wreck. He was 35 to 1. None of those outrights hit, but I did have David Reagan at uh, 10 to 1 to finish inside the top 10. And he was one of the benefactors of that carnage. Uh, Reagan kept his nose clean all day. He's a very good super speedway racer. So that to me was not a huge surprise. And he finished top 10 in both Daytona races this year. That's uh, pretty incredible. So David Reagan did finish top 10, uh, 10 to 1, hit that bet last week uh, here on the show and do feel good about that one. Also want to talk quickly about, uh, you probably saw if you're on Twitter, like this insane parlay uh, that won almost a million bucks, uh, $13.49 free bet, a bunch of top 10 bets parlayed together in NASCAR. I don't retweet those ever. I don't talk about those because they give new bettors unrealistic false expectations for how things work in sports betting. They will put down minus EV parlays, hoping that they hit to, you know, get rich quick kind of thing. I don't want to talk about that because it just gives false expectations, bad expectations for things that are not realistic and probably not going to happen. This one though actually was plus EV. If I look at my numbers, I actually showed value on all four bets, all four individual legs uh, for this race, Cody Ware top 10, BJ McLeod top 10, Lana Castle top 10, and David Reagan top 10. My numbers showed value in all those. We talked about Reagan on the show. He was plus 950 when they bet it. It was uh, 10 to 1 when we talked about it on the show, but my number showed value in all those numbers. And yes, there is a situation where if Cody Ware gets a top 10, that's one less spot for BJ McLeod to finish top 10. So there is some negative interaction there they're not independent events because assuming one guy's in the top 10 you have nine spots uh, for the rest of that group but at the same time these are all bad cars and they run in the back for the entire race which means that if david reagan finishes top 10 you're probably going to get a situation where there actually is a correlation where it makes it, it, it higher odds land castle finishes top 10 too so i don't want to like dive too much into this because again, it's still, it is still like, you know, a, a one in a million kind of shot. Um, and I don't want to focus too much on those, but I think the overall takeaway is think about events. If you're looking at parlays that are correlated, but may not seem to be that correlated because if they're going to let you get tie-ins like that, you should take advantage. Um, so this better did exactly that kudos to them for doing so again, it was four plus EV legs within the same parlay individually, independently. Again, I, didn't run the numbers to see if my simulation side of situation were all four in the top 10, but individually they were all good bets. That's what I want in a parlay. So when you see those stories, you know, sports books tweeting out stories about how, Oh, this insane parlay hit and we lost a million bucks. I would ignore them 99.8 times out of a thousand or 99.8 times out of a hundred. But this one actually was plus EV pretty much across the board. It was based on um, good bets, based on actually analysis from two guys I like a lot in the NASCAR betting sphere, uh, Dr. Nick Giffen we've had on the show here, actually, uh, at Rotodoc on Twitter, and then Jordan McAbee at Fan Racing Online. They have a podcast called Stacking Denny's. They talked about those bets on the show, and it wound, wound up hitting. So, yes, ignore those. They're bad uh, for the most part, but this one actually was plus EV. I wanted to highlight that just to show that there are situations where there are there's correlation. You can take advantage of that uh, with same game parlays or other parlays, and that's going to be a situation where parlays are going to be better bets than they otherwise would be. Don't go chasing minus EV bets just to get super, super long odds. But in this one situation, I think it actually did make a lot of sense. So kudos to that guy. Congrats to him or congrats to them, I should say. Um, and uh, spend it wisely. Uh, but just don't go chasing long parlays if they're not plus EV bets across the board. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Big show, though, for tomorrow. We're going to have Pitching Ninja on to talk about uh, uh, Tuesday's MLB slate. Tuesday's always pretty big, so we'll talk about that. Dr. Ed Fang swinging by on Wednesday to break down uh, college football week number one as well. Hopefully, we can get a good week this week, as good as it was last week as well. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Don't forget to subscribe to Covering the Spread. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 